when the friends do some things well, then they would do something, uh, reward the friends. So that's something that could, could happen in a friendship. Okay, charismatic leadership. Charismatic leaders inspire and motivate others to behave in a certain way by being enthusiastic, energetic, and charismatic. So the leader can inspire and motivate others to, to behave, to follow him, by he is enthusiastic, very, very uh, zealous, very enthusiastic, and energetic, full of energy, and charismatic, that he has certain qualities that attract people. Now, in history, we can see many charismatic leaders. Now, they might, there might be good ones and they might be bad ones. For instance, um, uh, Alexander the Great, he can motivate his soldiers to follow him, to go to conquer many places. So he's a charismatic leader. And also Adolf Hitler, he, you know, he's not a good, good man at all. Uh, he, he, you know, he just uh, did things for his own dream, not for the good of Germany or for his people. Uh, actually, uh, you know, before he died, he, uh, he knew that he was about to die. He told his generals to blow up uh, Germany. You know, that's what I read, uh, what I saw on the internet, that he wanted to destroy Germany. He said, without me, then there is no Germany. So that's very bad uh, charismatic leader because he just wanted to do it for himself. Okay, now charismatic leaders, the pros. Now, many uh, evangelists are also charismatic leaders, that they influence many people uh, by their life, by their uh, spiritual gift, by their zeal, by their joy, by their love. Okay, the pros, these leaders can inspire and motivate others through their enth enthusiasm, their energy, and charisma, so they can influence other people. They also create an optimistic work atmosphere, fostering high morale and engagement. So they can make the place of work very optimistic, very positive, have a positive atmosphere, and the people have high morale. They are highly motivated, and they are highly engaged. And the cons, negative example would be Adolf Hitler, that he was uh, he was charismatic, but he really has is a was a problematic person. And the persuasive abilities can be utilized for self-serving purposes without considering the best interests of the organization or team. So they could be doing things for themselves. Now you might ha have heard of Jim Jones. Jim Jones, he uh, he claims. Um, uh, I forgot what he said he was, but he want people to follow him totally, and then he took them to um, uh, South America, and then uh, the U.S. government uh, investigated on him, and then he f he knew that he would be caught, and then he gave cyanide to kill all the people who followed him. So he, you know, he has this problem that he just want to do things for his own interest, when he cannot do it then he killed all the people to follow him. Okay, and the focus on inspiring and motivating may overshadow the practical aspects of execution and implementation. So sometimes the problem is that they focus on inspiring and motivating, that they want to motivate, to uh, inspire people, may overshadow the practical aspect of ex execution. That is not practical. For instance, Adolf Hitler wanted to conquer the whole world. That's not practical. That's, you know, actually, uh, when he started to, uh, to be defeated, he should know that it's not realistic. He should give up. Uh, he should, you know, not to expand anymore, but he still wanted to expand. So that is unrealistic dream. But it's, it's good that he was not realistic, therefore he failed. If he succeeded, 
For instance, if he just conquer certain countries in Europe and then he just rule over these countries, that means in these countries there will be uh, absolute rule and then people will suffer greatly. So, and also he will kill more Jews if he's just stopped there. But he, you know, it's, it's good that he did not stop. And so then he was, uh, he was stopped by the, um, by the different countries trying to uh, uh, conquer him and then and then finally he commit suicide so he was then he failed then he failed uh, it's good that he failed and I hope in the future that that uh, that won't be uh, you know this autocratic uh, leaders influencing the whole world but the Bible said that there will be because Antichrist is an autocratic uh, leader that he influenced many people and control many people okay the requirement of a charismatic leader that he should have charisma from the relationship with God or in his personality so as a Christian we should have motivation from from God the personality uh, from God that we have this love for people we have joy we have wisdom that draws people to follow us then he should receive direction from God, that he has clear direction what, what to do in the future, that he has clear direction. He should care about the people who don't have his zeal or vision, that, that he should learn to care about the people who don't have this, this uh, zeal, that, he, that those people are not as enthusiastic as he is. And he should motivate and help them. He should not be critical of them, so he should not criticize them. Uh, actually, anyone should not criticize other people, but to guide people to change. So how does this work at home? So there could be parents that are charismatic, the personality uh, attracts the children to follow him. Now, if he cares about the children, then the children would be attracted to follow, follow the parents. Uh, there are many children said that they they love the parents because the parents are charismatic but actually they also mo the most impo important quality they love the parents uh, is that the parents are loving and caring that's the most important uh, uh, characteristics so if we are caring and loving and then we have this charisma and also be able to transform our children then uh, then we can be a good charismatic leader at home uh, and then in the place of work that we have this charisma that we have this zeal and excitement uh, in the church also that but at the same time we have love for people we have joy we have uh, wisdom from God and all this also a part of the charisma of a leader that he has these qualities and in friendship that if we have this charisma from God then we can influence our friends okay and then transformational leadership that these leaders they transform others okay transformational leaders transform others nurturing them to achieve greater source success and growth so they transform the followers change them so that they can have more success and more growth the pros, transformational leaders encourage creativity. They encourage people to be creative, to be able to, uh, to change the part, you know, that they can grow. And also they challenge the status quo. The status quo means the present condition. To change, to ch challenge the present condition. Does the church have to have this uh, liturgy, or, or this way of worshiping, can we change? Can we grow? Uh, does the church only have? Uh, does the church have to have only one service, or can we have different services for different age groups? Or some churches will have a more contemporary worship. Can we have that, or have a youthful uh, worship? Is that possible to change to uh, uh, the present condition? and foster a culture of continuous improvement so continue to improve continue to find ways to improve and growth that people can grow 
and the church can grow, the organization can grow. Additionally, they create a supportive and empowering work environment. So if they have a supportive environment that people are encouraged, uh, they are rewarded, they are supported, they are loved, and also they have power that when they attend the worship, the people will get strength and empower. Now this is one important quality that we want to have when the people attend the church, they are really empowered, they, they are, that they get excited. Uh, they, uh, they are excited to, to follow God more closely. They, they are attracted by God, the good qualities of God by His grace to follow Him. So if the people attend church and then they are strengthened and then they will enjoy church, that foster a sense of satisfaction, that people will have satisfaction, high, high morale, that, that the atmosphere and the, uh, the, uh, the condition of the church or the group is motivating. And so the pros, if the transformational leader can do that, that would be great. And the cons, the problems, that if his high expectation and drive for excellence can sometimes lead to increased pressure and workload for the employees. So if it's too high expectation, too, too much drive, too much pressure, then the people will feel pressure. Or if the pastors always telling people, you have to do evangelism. Now, instead of saying that you have to do evangelism, we can say, you know, when you do evangelism, God is happy with you and God will bless you. And also the people who are brought to Christ will enjoy the relationship with God. They will enjoy Christ. They will enjoy us. The, they will enjoy the church. Instead of saying, you have to. Why didn't you bring anyone uh, this month, this year? Why haven't you brought anyone? Instead of giving people pressure, we, we can give them the motivation with the grace of God. And in addition to this, in addition to this, transformational leaders driven by the pursuit of organization goals may overlook the developmental needs of individual team members. They might overlook the, the needs of development, that they just want the organization to be transformed. They forget about the, the needs, the developmental needs that the people need to, uh, to develop to be developed. Okay, so transformational leader should learn how to transform people with biblical principles or workable principles. So they should have principles from the Bible to love people, to encourage people, to tell them how much God loves them. And also tell people, you know, when they obey God, how God is pleased with them, but when they disobey God, that, that there will be destruction. So give them biblical principles and workable principles that is workable that there are ways that they can overcome the sins there are ways that they can they can enjoy God more and enjoy loving God and enjoy serving God and he should show people step by step how to change so how do we change now in my teaching I have taught you like the five steps of victory these are step by step one be aware of the negative thinking or sins we have. Second, it's destructive. Third, what does the Bible say? And fourth, uh, pray for forgiveness and strength. Fifth, to uh, choose to obey God. And then I said that, you know, sometimes at the beginning, it might take some time for the person to choose to, to obey God. Now, at the beginning, it might take an hour or longer. But uh, gradually he, he can become, you know, he can do it faster. That he can do it in half an hour or later he can do it in a few minutes that he can overcome his negative thinking and his negative feelings that he can um, change. And then I said that every step we change, God is very happy. Every little change we have, even a cup of cold water that we give to one of those that belongs to Christ, then he will by no means lose his reward. So every little thing we do for God, God is very happy. So these are steps to encourage people step by step to change. So, 
And then three, he should show compassion and care for the people, that he should care about them, that they have, you know, they, they understand the needs of the people. And he should accept people who cannot transform. So he should accept when some people cannot change, uh, then he accept them and continue to help them, not to pressure them, but to tell them, you know, you start to pray to God, God is very happy. You start to trust in God and obey God, God is very happy. You start to overcome your sins and God is very happy. So how does this work at home? Transformational leadership that we change the personality, try to change, but not to force. Not to force the children or the spouse. We can tell them, you know, when you change, God is very pleased with you and, and your life will go higher and higher and God has a wonderful plan in your life. When you obey God, God is very happy and then your life will go higher and higher. Do you want that to happen in your life? So to motivate people, uh, the, the family members at home. And in the place of work, that too, we can encourage people to transform. Oh, do you, you learn this skill and you're improving and you are nice to people, so you are improving, that is good qualities and that will help the organization. And then in the church, that we encourage all the people to be caring, to be loving and tell them, now you are growing, you are caring for people and you know how to counsel people, how to pray for people, how to lay in on people. Now that's what we want to train people. Now in my uh, church, in my training program in Hong Kong, I train them all that they learn to encourage each other and pray for each other, lay hands on each other. So they all learn to do that. And then they start to do it to the people around them. Uh, uh, when they go to the mission field, when they do it to the family members, to the friends. So they all learn to do that. So that's something I try to transform the life by letting them practice doing the things I train them to do in the church. So I hope you would also let your, uh, give the opportunity for your church member to practice counseling people, praying for people, talking to people, laying hands on people so that they will, um, they will learn to change, that their life is changed. And then in friendship, that we can influence the friends uh, if they have certain problems in the uh, personality uh, or the certain ways of relating people, we can influence them to uh, so that their life will be transformed. Now, of course, we cannot force them. We cannot force them to change. It has to come step by step. Okay, the autocratic leadership. Um, now, I would say mostly in a church, we should not use this. But I have seen a pastor who is quite autocratic, not totally, um, he was, he has a church, he's, um, he's from America, he went to uh, the Philippines and he has st uh, strict rules for his followers. So he's uh, autocratic and also um, bureaucratic. He has certain rules and then uh, the, the followers, the, all the co-workers are supposed to follow strictly and if they're not, if they don't follow, uh, they will be fired. Uh, so I've seen this pastor. He managed to help his church grow. Now, I would still say that. Now, I, I don't know how much love he has for people. I, I, I'm not very sure about that. Uh, for, for someone like that, he should always have love for people, to understand people, not just to have pressure on people. But I've seen him using pressure on people now, he, in a sense, it works for him because he, he really helped the church to grow. And also, many people at the spiritual level, many people did grow. It's, it's true. Uh, so I'm not saying that it's totally not workable, that, uh, that you know, this can work if we have love and care for the people. At the same time, we have certain rules that are very strict. Now, for myself, I prefer not to be like this. Okay, autocratic leaders make decisions and give orders without seeking input from others. So he just tell people what to do. 
Now, if this person has a lot of wisdom, he has, you know, he has good wisdom. He know how to lead the people. Then, in a way, uh, now he make decisions for people, and also he had guidance from God. Then maybe in a way he can do that. But I still think that God gives wisdom to everyone too, to other leaders too. So he should listen to other people instead of just giving orders. Okay, pros: autocratic leaders enable swift and decision action in crisis. That the decision will be quick because he just make the decision himself. So he can uh, take decisive action very quickly because he is the only one who makes the decision. Moreover, this leadership style provides clear direction and instructions, uh, minimizing ambiguity because they have clear direction and instruction so that it won't be ambiguous. It won't be, uh, the guidelines will not be vague, will be very clear cut, very, uh, people know what to follow. So that's the advantage of this kind of leadership. And the cons, the problem is, a limited involvement in decision making in an autocratic leadership style may leave team members feeling disengaged or un undervalued. So if he, he doesn't uh, involve the people in decision making, he just makes the decision himself and then uh, he would not let the people participate in the decision making and then people will feel disengaged. It's, you know, they just think, you know, I have no part in this organization. Organization. I just follow orders. I just do uh, what I'm supposed to do. So they are not zealous. So what the result is that the the followers are not zealous because they they find it is just following the leaders. Furthermore, the lack of input from others can also impede the generation of fresh ideas and diverse perspective. The lack of input from other people. Then it will stop fresh ideas, new ideas, because it will all, always follow his style. And also, that, uh, there won't be diverse perspective, because with different people, there are different perspectives. For instance, for myself, my wife gives me the perspective of understanding people more. So that's very helpful to me. So that's something that her input influences me. So I hope that you would listen to other people's opinions, so that we have a diverse perspective that we can understand the needs of different people. Okay, so the autocratic leaders need to, should avoid this, now I say Christian leaders should avoid uh, using this method that, that his absolute every time is him giving orders. Now, now, why do I list this kind of uh, leadership here? It's a fact that there are pastors who are like that. There are some people, some uh, co-pastors, uh, church workers said that, oh, the pastors always want things done a certain way and they, they try to work together with the pastors and it's difficult. So, uh, when a, the senior pastor is autocratic, only he can give orders and only he has the decision power then the other uh, then the other leaders would have no motivation to give ideas and they would have more frustration uh, you know it's a fact that there are christian leaders who are author authoritarian leaders who have such qualities should learn to respect the abilities of the followers and should learn to listen to people and understand them. So even if we have this personality, now actually I want to say that these eight qualities, these eight styles, each person has a preferred style and actually he might have a few preferred style that he is like that naturally. Some people are naturally autocratic. Uh, that he need to learn, he need to learn to listen to people, he need to learn to, to ask the opinions of people. So this is something that we can grow. He might still be uh, autocratic 
in a certain uh, degree, but he will still listen to people. So how does this work at home? Now, there are many parents who are autocratic. They just tell the children what to do. They, you must do this, you must do that. And what happens is, the children might obey him when he's there. But when he's away, then they won't obey. And then when they grow up, they don't obey either. So it only works for a while. It doesn't work all the time. It doesn't work uh, in the whole life of the person. But if we transform this person, it will work in his life. Or in the place of work. There are many places of work that the boss will just tell people what to do. The, the, uh, the workers just obey. And also what happens is, like um, they would force the workers to do certain things and and then if they are uh, if they the workers cannot do it then the boss will yell at them and or or uh, beat them or or cut the salary that happens in many places of work or fire them fire the workers in the church if it's autocratic then it could affect the people that they you know, they, uh, the workers think that they have to obey everything. They, they, um, they, they are under pressure and then the workers are not happy. They're not f joyful. They're not free. Um, now, some people say to achieve faster goal, we need to be autocratic. We have to give orders. But it's good that when we make any decision, we discuss with the people and find out what is the best way to do things? That is the best. Uh, at the same time, that, that person, if he's autocratic in nature, that he can still give orders, but he will ask the opinions of the people first. Now in friendship, if a person is autocratic, uh, I would say that even in some marriage, one spouse is always forcing the, the, other, the other spouse to be obedient, forcing him or her to obey him or her and always do the things he wants him her to do so that happens in friendship and in um, and in the church 